what we call mixed methods. And these are, these are a combination of explicit and implicit methods. And in general, we could use a, a, a linear combination, right? So if we define some parameter theta, which is basically going to be the influence of one method on the other, right? So in this case, the influence of the explicit method, which we'll write here, Plus, right, so that's everybody should recognize that this is the equation for the explicit scheme that we just that we just wrote down. So we're going to multiply that by theta, and then add one minus theta. Add times the implicit scheme. This is implicit. So let's go ahead and, before I make the point, let's go ahead and perform this operation, right? So we have theta. So this is our mixed method. Now, when I, if I had just wrote it down like this, it might have not been clear what I'm doing. But if you look, realize that this equation is the result of adding those two together. Okay. But when I write it like that, just look at it. When if theta were zero, what would I get? If I choose theta to be zero, what do I get? Fully implicit. If theta were one, what do I get? Fully explicit. So if that is something in the middle, then I have some sort of mix between the two. Okay? And and that's what this equation is. And let's rearrange this equation.
So for, for any value, so all I did was rearrange this equation, but then it's, it's a little easier to see what's going, what it's going on. For any value of theta that's not 1, right? If it's 1, then it's, then it's explicit. Right? We get us back, back the explicit equation. For any value that's not 1, do I have to invert a matrix? I'm solving for Pn plus 1. Right? If this is 1, then that term goes away. Okay. So we're not going to count inverting B as inverting the matrix, because that's just 1 over the value. But if this term exists, right, if, if for any value of theta not 1, then that thing still lives, right? And I have to invert this. The solution of that is this thing inverse times that. So you might ask, well, why would you do this, right? Because we already had an implicit scheme. The, the disadvantage of the implicit scheme is that you have to invert a matrix. Now we added an explicit scheme to it, and we have an implicit scheme still. We still have to invert a matrix. So why would you do this? So the, the reason we would do it, and by the way, if we use theta equals 1 half, this is called the, there's a name for it. It's called the crank. Nicholson method. And so the reason, then, so that the reason that you do it is because it's, it's more accurate in time. Remember, both the implicit and the explicit were only first order accurate in time. The error was proportional to delta t. Right? The Crank-Nicholson method actually has an error that's proportional to delta t squared. Okay. And I'll show you that in just a second. Right? So we won't derive it. I'll just show you that when we review the slides. 